Come on in, everybody. Let's get started. Let's get this party started. I have questions. I can't figure out. I have a big question. I can't figure out how to quit my printer from printing on the back of a page. I don't know how it does it. I've tried everything in the world. I've been spent 30 minutes looking through my settings to try to make it stop it. I don't like it. It makes me angry. So if anybody knows how to make a MacBook Pro stop printing on the back of a sheet of paper, please let me know because it's not making me happy. And if something doesn't make me happy, if mama ain't happy, ain't nobody happy. So everybody get on in here while I get off of my little bandwagon here. <sighs> anyway, please share our videos. Yep, y'all are the best sharers in the whole wide world. Let's go for 50 today. Are you ready? Set? <laughs> share. Everybody share. So Leanne sent me a text this morning. She says, okay, I, I need help. And I need help. So we both need help. There's Melissa. Hey, girlfriend. Um, and she said, since we do our show at the top of the hour, you do one at one at 11 o'clock and at three o'clock. Why don't we change our time to go up and down our stairs to something 45? So at 945, we went up and down our stairs twice. I put in a load of laundry and came back upstairs. And then at 1045, I went and rebooted the laundry and went up and down the stairs twice. She forgot her coffee, so she had to go back downstairs one more time and get her coffee and come back up. So she's gotten five trips, I've gotten four trips. We are moving and shaking, I am telling you. And this is so much fun because at 545, I have alarm set on my phone. Alarm will go off on my phone and it will say, ready, set, go. Like, um, Mel, I can't think of Mel's last name, Robinson, I think. Uh, Mel says, five, four, three, two, one, blast off. Well, we just go ready, set, go. So we have set alarms on our phone. Now I do not have the snooze thing. Snooze is cheating. You don't want to snooze. You want to get up right then. So I've turned all the snoozes off. So I cannot hit snooze on my alarm. So I, all the snoozes are turned off. So immediately when that alarm comes on, I go straight down the stairs and it's working today. Boogity, boogity, boogie. Mail Robbins. Yep. Boogity, boogity, boogity. So are y'all with me? At, at 11.45, I'm going to be doing it again. Whether I'm talking to you or not, I'm going to go down the stairs because the alarm's going to pop up on my screen and we are going to go down the steps. So Leanne knows the science behind it. The psychology behind it is that she and I are doing it together. We're keeping each other accountable. And we're getting our butts up out of a chair. Now, I might set a timer for 30 minutes after the fact. So like at, at, at 15 after, I need to get up again because I've been seated for 45 minutes or more. So I may get up and run around with my feather duster, grab my mop, just... just get up and do something. So I've got my little list. We made our little list yesterday. Y'all all like that too. And I want to thank everybody for taking um, a, um, a little time out of your day to hit reply to one of my messages. So if you'll do that every, every so often, it's going to keep our open rates where people recognize. Put fly lady at flylady.com 
net in your address book. Yep. Butts up. So I've got questions today. And I just have to tell you something interesting. Uh, there's a guy that is a character actor and he usually plays a bad guy on TV. And I heard this from Scott Adams this morning and I love Scott Adams, but uh, I can't pronounce this fella's name. It's Danny uh, Danny DeJo or something. Patty, put it in here so people can. I can't even spell it. I put it in Slack. But... He plays a, a bad guy in, in the things he does. And he is a character actor. He's older like me. And he's um, he plays this bad guy. And he was in Machete. And he's he's been in some TV commercials. He's just really an interesting actor. Well, he came up on an accident the other day. And his... Um, the car was turned over. There was a baby in the car seat and he couldn't get through the window to get the baby out. He couldn't do it. But another bystander, a, a lady, Monica somebody, they saved this baby. And he made this comment that every good thing that has ever happened to him, Patty put the quote in, uh, every good thing that has ever happened to him has happened as a direct result of him doing a, something good for somebody else. Imagine that. Imagine that. And, and then he ended that with everything. Everything. So every good thing that has ever happened to him has been a direct result of helping someone else. And when Fly Lady first started, I was at the Chinese restaurant, which is one of my favorite places to go because my nickname is Sushi Queen, and they have sushi, and I got a fortune cookie, and it said, when you continually give, you will continually have. Just think about it. When you, when you keep giving, it keeps coming back to you. When you keep giving, it keeps coming back to you. The Bible teaches us that this. I don't know where the verse is, but Patty can find the verse and, and share it. She's, she knows more about Bible verses, or my sister Susan can, can find the Bible verse. That when you give of yourself, it comes back to you in tenfold. Tenfold. So folks, keep giving. Keep sharing. Because you're share when you share, you're giving somebody else a chance to get out of chaos. When you share, when you do something for somebody else, you just you're helping others. You're helping others. So I've got questions. They are maybe printed on the back side of paper, but I just don't know how to fix that. Anyway, here we go. First question, I have a buildup of one of those mop and shine products on my kitchen floor. Is there any way to get it clean? Well, you need a respirator. <laughs> you need to get a little respirator at, at, the, um, at Home Depot or Lowe's. And you need to put on a respirator and then you need to make a bucket full of hot, water with a couple of cups of ammonia in it. Now you can probably Google it. I like to say DuckDuckGo. You can probably look it up on DuckDuckGo to find a remedy for um, mop and glow or mop and shine stuff products. And it's probably going to say a steam mop will probably work too. But just some ammonia water might be able to do the trick. Ammonia water. And it might need to be kind of strong, but that's a little strong smell. So you need a respirator. Can't buy ammonia in British Columbia. Wow, that's bad. 
but do a, do a duck duck go search and see if you can um see if you can find how to get it clean there's another product that's really rough on your hands so you need rubber gloves it's called um it's for cars it's for white walls on tires and it's bleach white and it really works well stop oh well that's probably true i don't know what it takes to make make drugs but you know that's just sad it's a cheap product here in the states I don't know if it's, I don't even know if Mop and Glow and that sort of product is good for laminates. So you're going to have to research your product that's on your floors because I have wooden floors and they need refinished. How do you get your husband and children on board? You can't. Have you ever read Tom Sawyer and Huckleberry Finn? You know, in that, in that, book they one of them and one of them was whitewashing a fence and they were singing and whistling and looking like it was a lot of fun and you know everybody wanted to help that's all you can do is you've got to change your attitude you got to change what's going on in here to let people know that you're having fun and when you're having fun they're going to want to join in so try it they have years of bad behavior that i have allowed and enabled don't be that way don't beat yourself up because you've been a you, what's happened is you've just been a bad example but you can change your example by putting a smile on your face a song in your heart and a purple rag in your hand or on your foot or a mop in your hand or a broom and just what what did the uh, seven dwarves they whistled while they worked whistled while while they work have fun put on some music and enjoy the process and you will get your family involved hubby buys in bulk because it's cheaper but food spoils and we don't have room it's only the two of us so a lot of food is wasted he still continues to buy bulk any suggestions of changing his mind let him clean out the refrigerator ask him to clean out the refrigerator now part of it is you put it in the refrigerator and you forget about it but you know my husband likes to buy bulk too and when he brings home a bunch of hamburger meat ground beef i stick it in the crock pot immediately with some water and i stir it set the timer to stir it every 15 minutes and i've got pre-cooked hamburger meat i let it cool i drain it i bag it to cut it takes 15 minutes to do it i mean 15 minutes to bag it and put it in the freezer and i've got pre-cooked hamburger meat so I don't know what he's buying in bulk, but bulk toilet paper is a good thing. You're not, that's not going away and get you some bento boxes. It, it's some little plastic boxes with lids that you can put in the dishwasher and wash them, but you can make dinners. You can make your own TV dinners, frozen dinners in these boxes and put them in the freezer. Now they only keep for about three months, but by golly, you got some stuff going on there. You can make meals, buy the bulk, cook it up, and then use it. Use it. I love Ziploc bags, and you can smash all the air out of them and do lots of good things. But you've got to take the time and know you have the time to process these bulk foods when it comes in. So stuff that's non-spoilable like toilet paper and other things that you use a lot of you need to find a place for under a bed in a closet where on a basement shelf on a garage shelf those things can go there but food wise 
I don't know what else you buy in bulk. You've got to take the time to process it. Because anything you throw in the trash can, anything you throw in the trash can is like throwing dollar bills in the trash. That's what my granny told me. Anything you throw in the trash that has been in the refrigerator, it's probably, be, it, you're throwing away dollar bills. You're throwing away dollar bills. So just imagine dropping dollar bills down in the trash. In fact, a good way to show your husband would be to attach a dollar bill to each one of those things. But part of it's your fault too, of not dealing with the excess. So as soon, as soon as the groceries come in the house, you have to put them away. Well, putting them away, if he buys in bulk, means wrapping things up in freezer paper and labeling everything, labeling everything. Now, freezing big packages of pork chops doesn't work unless you're planning on having a, a lot of company over. So you need to divide it up. If it's just two people, divide it up into two to three portion pieces or do four piece, four portion pieces. Then that way you have planned leftovers. Planned leftovers. So if he buys a huge packet of pork chops, then you need to divide it into two or three sections. It's just that easy. Even with raw hamburger meat, if you don't take the time to pre-cook it, all you do is just take a knife and cut it and put it in a bag. Cut it, put it in a bag, put it, cut it, put it in a bag, smash it down flat, and put it in a freezer. I love my, my upright freezer. Okay, which tool do you suggest for pet hair on hardwood floors? Pet hair on hardwood floors. Well, the Fly Lady Mop. You just wet this thing, you just wet this thing, and it gets up pet hair like you wouldn't believe. Then take it outside with a rub scrubber and just shake it off. Scrub, just take, use it to take it off. Or you can re-wet it and in your sink or in your bucket, your bucket system. You know, we have this pink bucket system over here. Let me find it. I can't even get to it right now. I'll have to do it later, do it this afternoon. So pet hair on hardwood floors, the mop is a great tool. Just run around and get the dust bunnies up. If you get the dust bunnies up, it is amazing. Your floor is always going to look clean. Always going to look clean. And for the carpet, little, you don't know how much dirt is on your throw rugs. We have a rug in front of our fireplace that critters like to lay there. That thing is covered in pet hair and you take the rub, the carpet sweeper to it and you wouldn't believe how much pet hair comes up. I love my Roomba. Robert got it for me when I was sick with bronchitis back in April and I missed my sister's wedding and it was absolutely, I had no clue this thing would, would do its thing, you know, run around the house. It, it, goes around the house for about an hour and 40 minutes every day, every day. And it gets stuff done. It really does get stuff done. And all I have to do is run the mop. But that's all I did before either because I never pre-swept because I like my mop. Okay, next question. Okay, everybody, share. Let's share because you sharing helps other people and it'll come back to you. Any tips for those with depression? My home is becoming so overwhelming and my depression seems to be getting worse. I feel exhausted before even starting. Now, here's the thing about the chicken and the egg. The chicken and the egg. Which comes first? The messy home? or the depression, who knows? 
doesn't matter. But you have to get up. You have to get dressed to lace up shoes. That's your assignment. Get up and get dressed to lace up shoes. Right now, while I'm talking to you, you can listen to me on your phone. You go get dressed to lace up shoes. No ifs, ands, or buts. Wash, if you need to wash your hair, wash your hair. Get dressed to lace up shoes. And then I want you to go sit in a sunbeam for 15 minutes with your cup of coffee, cup of tea, whatever. I want you to go sit in a sunbeam outside, out in nature, somewhere on your front porch, on your back steps. I don't care where you get. Go sit in a sunbeam. And then I want you to go shine your sink. Go shine your sink. That's where we all get started. How many of you shined your sink? I want to see thumbs up if you shined your sink. That you've actually gone through the motions of shining your sink. Tell, show this person that shining your sink really does work. Give it to, yeah, lots of hearts and thumbs up. Shining your sink does it. Go shine your sink. But you got to be dressed to lace up shoes. You have got to be dressed to lace up shoes. You hear me? Dressed to lace up shoes. The reason you feel exhausted is that you're piling on. You're just, everything's piling on you and you're not seeing any success because there's so much stuff to do. We're going to put our blinders on and we're going to focus one thing at a time. We're going to get dressed to lace up shoes. Then you're going to go sit in a sunbeam and you got to get some sun on your skin. You hear me? Sun on your skin. Have you eaten today? Have you had any water? A lot of times depression comes from not not staying hydrated. You're dehydrated. It's summertime, people. We need our water bottles by our side all the time. Yep, shiny sink makes you feel better immediately. So get dressed to lace up shoes. Go shine your sink. I don't care if you have to put the dishes on the floor to shine your sink. Go shine your sink. There goes the garage door. Robert's either going something or he's going outside to do something. And don't try to figure out why. Just get up and do it. Those of you who are sitting in your pajamas right now, I want you to get up and get dressed to lace up shoes right this minute. No sitting here waiting for this to be over. I want you to get dressed to lace up shoes now. Ready, set, go. Now, if your shoes hurt your feet, you're going to have to get a pair of shoes that fit. And you might have to loosen up the laces on the shoes a little bit. Okay, next question. It's time to share again. Everybody share. So we're almost at 400 people in here. Let's get some more people. I think we have more than 400 people in here, but that's the number I'm seeing, 369. Do you have any tips or advice on how to juggle caring for children and completing routines? Okay, folks. Children are your routines. You've got to involve your children in everything you do. If you're taking laundry to the washing machine, let your little ones follow behind you like little ducks. You know, we got to get our little ducks in a row. I got a little duck right here. Got to get our ducks in a row. Let them follow right behind you and accidentally drop a sock or two and you have them pick them up. And then you get a step stool. You can teach little kids how to do laundry. If you got a step stool, they can climb up on. So getting your children involved in helping you do your routines. So you're, 
the best thing you can do is get up 15 minutes before the flow of the family and you get dressed first. And then the, as part of their routine, they make their bed when they first get up. Children can do that. They love routines and let them help you. So if you haven't made your bed up, get your children to help you make their bed, make your bed, and then you go make their bed and show them how to do it. Show them how to make snow angels in the bed. The other night, Leanne and Mark and Robert and I were playing this game, and the game was snow angel. The name on the game is like, I don't know what the name of the game is. It's on Leanne's phone, and we play it. And we put the phone up to our head, and... <clears throat> It was Snow Angel, and I just automatically thought of seeing Robert try to act out a Snow Angel. I don't know that he's ever made one. He may have as a child, but you get in your bed, you pull the covers up to here, you, you move your arms like you're making a Snow Angel and straighten out the covers in between your sheet and your two sheets, and then... You hold the covers here and slide out. Just slide out the out the out of your bed and your bed is made. Your bed is practically made at that point. And then you can pull your big comforter over cuz we we're not we don't have our air conditioner on right now. You know that it's it's just beautiful out. It, what it got up to about 85 degrees here yesterday and that's not too hot for us. So yeah, it, it's amazing. It is just amazing that what you can do with these routines and get your children involved in doing it. But the secret is picking your clothes out the night before so that the kids know and school's starting soon. So having the clothes laid out. Now when you're doing the laundry, when you're doing, the, I've already got two loads going. One's in the dryer and one's in the washer right now. When you do the laundry, you can put together whole outfits. You take it off in whole outfits, wash it in whole outfits, put it together in whole outfits. And there's a lot of things at, at Walmart and other Target, all these places, they had these hanging sweater organizers. I bet you have one already. We used to sell them. Take a sweater organizer and hang it in the kid's closet and you've got five or six days of clothes and put everything in there from hair bows to underwear and socks in that little cubby. And when you have a cubby filled with clothes, they can pick and choose from five or six things and just refill the hole as the laundry gets done. It's fun and they can get dressed without any help from you. Even two year olds can get dressed. It's gonna be interesting. They don't have to think, they just have to grab that whole outfit. Now, if you've got infant children, a lot of people like to wear their babies on them in some kind of carrier. But, you know, kids need to learn how to um, sort of comfort themselves. So Justin always laid on a pallet. His granny Elizabeth made a, laid a quilt down on the floor and that was his pallet and he would roll and turn over and do lots of, it was good exercise for him to be on the pallet. Next question. You mentioned that you can tell when someone's desk is cluttered just by talking to them. What is it that gives it away? Usually they can't find something they can't find something. But honestly, I ask them, is your desk clean? Is your desk clean? And is your desk clean? And they, I can tell when they're lying to me too. Because they always try to make excuses for their desk being messy, especially writers, especially writers because they want everything within arm's reach. Can you discuss large homes that have more rooms than the usual schedule? 
Uh, here's the thing about large homes. If you've got four bathrooms, don't you go potty four or five times, six times a day? Go to a different bathroom in your house. Go to a different bathroom every time you need to swish and swipe. Hey, y'all, look at that. We're 370. Let's get some more shares in here. Large homes aren't any different from smaller homes. There's just a little more square footage. And it, you can do an one, you do a five minute room rescue. You, it only takes a few minutes to run a mop in an open area. Two, three minutes. We do it every Monday. It's all about getting up and quit making excuses that I have a large home. You can do a weekly home blessing on the first floor on Monday and on the second floor on Tuesday, on, on Friday. So don't make excuses. Just come up with creative ways to do things. Bedrooms are usually up on the top floors. Maybe a, a study or like Leanne, they have two offices up on their upper floor. Okay, next question. Can you please share again how we get the homeschooling emails and do they still include your other routines? Yes, they still include our other routines. This is just an email. You're still going to get all the other emails. You're just going to get this specific email from Tammy. So you, in the carousel, there is a, and if Patty or Liz will go to the homeschooling section on our website, in the carousel, it slides to the left and right. You'll see a blackboard or a green board or something, but it says homeschooling. It says homeschooling on it. And you click on that and there is a, a join link in that. There it is. Here's how you can, can join the homeschooling section and it sign up. Now, when you sign up through this link, it takes you off of all the other lists that we have. So you're not going to get double emails of everything. And this is a great way to do it. A lot of people are starting the school. I think uh, Emily will be starting her school right after Labor Day. But they try to start a week early and then Ethan's going to be taking most of his classes at a junior college at AB Tech. And <clears throat> the kid's going to have a two-year degree when he graduates from high school. So get signed up if you want to homeschool. Tammy can help you. Leanne homeschooled. Caroline had a two-year degree when she graduated practically from, from high school. So it helps to cut down the cost of college. It really does. Community colleges are the, are the best value in our educational system. Community colleges are. My hairdresser's husband is a dean at our Blue Ridge Community College. And he helps a lot of people. What are ways to encourage kids to do their routines? You got to make it fun. You have to make it fun. If you don't make it fun, it's not going to get done. So Liz did a video uh, a couple years ago of Mikey cleaning his room. We have kids missions every day. There are just some fun ways to get your kids involved in doing their routines. But one of the best ways is rewards. Yep. And do camp going to want to fly? Set it up so that having their rooms clean is an important part of their day because they're going to get a reward for having the cleanest room for the whole week. Maybe it's going to the movies or going to get ice cream or, you know, just think about it. Date night with mom could be a fun way to, you know, get your, come up with rewards. Come up with rewards. 
and let the kids sit down and have a meeting. Let them name their rooms like they would name their camp cabins. And it is going to be um, fun for them. And maybe help them get rid of clutter. Let them have a yard sale. Let them have a yard sale. It's the only time I ever recommend having a yard sale is when the kids do it. Now you have to supervise, but you're not doing it. They're getting rid of their clutter. And if you get rid of your clutter, they can, they can um, sell it for you and make a commission so they can learn about entrepreneurial things like making money to do something fun. Think about it. Going to the beach, uh, going to a lake or a swimming pool or little things like that are great rewards. Sometimes it may be going to Carowinds. Tammy and her um, youth group went to Carowinds this past uh, Monday, I think it was. There's some great ways to get your kids involved and rewards are part of it and it helps. Incentives. Think of it as an incentive. And you've got to be in charge. You have got to be the camp director and it really does work. It really does. So Camp Gonna Want to Fly is a control journal that I've built to establish your camp and to do some fun stuff with your kids. And it it's like going to summer camp. One summer, I went to three camps in one summer. Now, granted, mother wanted to get rid of me, but I didn't go to daddy's that summer. And so I went to, I went to church camp, I went to 4-H camp, and I went to Girl Scout camp, and it took up all the summer, the whole summer, the whole summer. So incentives really do work with kids. Punishment doesn't work. I know you think it does, but have you ever been standing at the sink washing dishes and tears rolling down your face all because all because you were being punished? No. Punishment doesn't work. It just scars us for life to where we never want want to do anything again. Incentives get people moving. They're doing it of their own accord because who's calling me that somebody called me. I don't know who called me. So everybody, it's time to get off of here. My alarm's going to go off in a minute. I'm going to run up and down the stairs. Leanne, are you ready? Ready, set. I'm going to finish this up. I love you all. I will see you at three o'clock this afternoon. Don't forget the sales we got going on. Purple Rag BOGO. And get your calendars with the discount of cru cruising. Uh, what is it? 865? Uh, 865, I think, is cruising is our code this week. Ready? So, everybody, let's get some stuff done. I'll see you at 3 o'clock.